thanks Romola and thank you Desi for your fantastic talk. Well, um, yeah, it's been 10 months since we were last here and um, I think Romola and I have sort of uh, moved into our roles quite well now. I think last year we were probably in a state of shock thinking what have we taken on board uh, in a one day a week um, position. But um, we've, you know, really enjoyed the last 12 months and really excited to be here again to share with you all of the achievements that we have made, which I think are significant. Um, and the real reason why we're able to do what we've done this year is because of the Stan Perrin Charitable Foundation, in fact, who provided us with some support to enable us to move, <laughs> move from one day to actually two days a week for Romola and myself, which makes a really big difference in trying to make the RAIN study more sustainable and do some more strategic planning and increase our staff to look at our bioresources and all of those things that we identified as being key to ensuring the RAIN study can continue on forever and ever. So thank you so much to the Stan Perrin Charitable Foundation and to Dr Barbara Shield, who is here representing them. Um, it's, you know, we would not have been able to do everything we've done this year without that, that kind of support. Thank you. In addition to um, the Stan Perrin Charitable Foundation, we also were lucky enough to receive some funding from Lottery West. And that has enabled us to really bring the three cohorts together, like what Desiree was talking about with Origins, Busselton and the RAIN study to talk about how we can really work closely together to optimise the data and the work that we have together and make ourselves stronger together. WA is a relatively small place, even though we're a big state, we are small. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition and we recognise that we actually need to be working together to improve our success uh, nationally and internationally in getting our um, resources for new research and um, we're really looking forward to working with uh, Origins and Busselton uh, going forward and it's a fantastic team and, and uh, we work hard but we have a lot of fun so um, thank you to Origins and Busselton for, for joining with us on this new journey. In terms of other funding success, um, Alex Duvall who has been our biosamples and data manager and been with the RAIN study for I think it might be 16 years, Alex. Give us a little wave, thank you very much. <laughs> Alex, Alex wrote her first ever grant and was successful in receiving uh, a grant to get a weighing scale chair for our generation's follow up. And we're really immensely proud of her for that. And you know, this really speaks to us uh, as a RAIN study family, trying to encourage our team and our staff to um, push themselves and you know, do new things and um, tackling things like grant writing, which you've obviously done in such a fantastic way. So congratulations to Alex for that. Now, most of you know that we are planning our generations follow up. We have never, ever in the history of the RAIN study been bringing back generations one and two together. So this is a huge undertaking. The staff have been so busy, it's like a little beehive um, constantly at our little rain study house. Um, planning for this is a, is a massive undertaking, but we're so excited about what it means for the rain study, what it means for science, what it means for Western Australia. And seeing so many participants here today actually gave me goosebumps because I just think it is so wonderful to have such significant engagement from you all and everything that you have done. You have essentially provided everything about your lives to health and medical science and research and made significant impacts. And for that, we are eternally grateful. And we're really keen to acknowledge everything that you have done for us. We, we decided we really wanted to ask participants and researchers, what is of interest to you? So if we're going to be doing a Generations 1 and 2 follow-up, what are you interested in? Tell us. So we, we sent out a survey to researchers and to participants. We had fantastic feedback from participants. I think we had over 340, three, nearly 350 participants responded to that survey, which is excellent. And some, some of the key issues that were raised were around mental health. So a real, real focus and understanding of, of mental health um, as a priority area. Um, physical activity, fertility was another a key area that, that people were interested in. 
Um, and, and they aligned quite well with research interest as well. But we have heard you. So we have heard what you have said. And that is why today we actually have our People's Choice uh, presenters. So we've brought in presenters who are using the RAIN study data, so really key senior RAIN study researchers, but who are working in those areas that you as participants and researchers as well, but have identified as areas that are of interest to you. So we hope that you, and we're sure that you will find these um, interesting. So we've been, as I, as I mentioned, we've been really keen to recognise the contribution that our participants have made to science. Um, and in doing that, we have uh, nominated them for West Australian of the Year and Australian of the Year. Um, needless to say, they're not ready for us yet. <laughs> but, but we haven't given up. So generally, these types of awards are given to an individual and we want to nominate 7,000 individuals. Um, but uh, we will keep advocating for that because the contribution as a whole that you've all made is just so huge and it really does deserve to be recognised. So we will, keep, we will keep on until we succeed. So thank you again. Um, so participant engagement, well, we welcomed uh, 510, uh, 510 participants to our final um, heart function study, which finished on the 30th of June. So that was a fantastic achievement, particularly given it was run in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the staff and participants really put themselves out there and um, you know, worked really hard to, to make that happen. So congratulations to you all. Uh, we've had a number of um, key research, pieces of research come out. You've probably seen them, some in the news um, around um, IVF. Roger Hart is going to be talking about some of this work today. Um, myopia, pain, um, all kinds of research, autism. So we've had over 35 pieces of research published so far this year in um, peer-reviewed journals, and I'm, I'm sure it's actually probably a lot more than that. We don't always get notified of the publications, um, but we will um, uh, we'll be updating that as the years go on. So we would like to also officially thank our unincorporated joint venture um, board who uh, have supported us for another five years. So in 2017, we had the first um, unincorporated joint venture agreement, which lasted for five years. And thankfully this year, uh, that has been renewed for another five years. So this essentially enables us to carry on for another five years with some sort of core infrastructure funding. So thank you to our, all of our members of the board and all of the universities and um, research institutes who provide us with that support because we wouldn't be able to be here without you. We, uh, we said goodbye to our, our patron, um, the, the Governor uh, Kim Beasley, and we're looking forward to welcoming the new uh, Governor, um, Governor Chris Dawson. Um, we're hoping to be able to meet with him relatively soon to see if he would like to be our patron. So fingers crossed there. Uh, we've had a, a bit of a rework with some of our special interest groups. Um, we've sort of tried to streamline things so that they make a bit, a bit more sense to, to people, to, to researchers and to participants when they come onto our website. Um, we'd like to thank a number of outgoing SIG leaders. So um, thank you very much to Anne Smith, Paul Koshy, Pat Dunlop, Darren Beals, Rob Tate. And welcome to our incoming SIG leaders. Emma De Jong and Jennifer Marino. Jennifer's here, thank you for flying for all the way from Victoria. Thank you, Jen. And thank you to our continuing SIG leaders. Uh, there are a number of SIG leaders here, and I won't go through them all because I've had my little sign saying time is nearly up. Uh, but thank you all for your contributions to continuing with our special interest groups and um, all the work that you do in engaging. We have said farewell to some fantastic staff, um, which has been sad. So um, Juliana Gomez Zabatero was our scientific manager for a number of years, and we were very sad to see her go, but excited for her to pursue um, new things in her career. Um, and um, we wish her all the best. In terms of numbers, we have 46 students at the moment. So these are mainly PhD students. Uh, we have had 11 interns, which has been really exciting. So um, Kate Rowlands, our communications manager, has been actively engaging with um, in the intern programs and, and we've had huge success with that and it's been fantastic to you know, help train the, these younger generations. 
as I said, number of publications, over 35 projects and 22 grants in 2022.